All the demo material we're going to use here is from uh, a show called Cycle Canada. It was a commercial done a few years ago. We've chosen it for a few reasons. One, because it's very complicated, so it's a good way to show tracks and, and uh, folding and stuff. Uh, and also, it's very, very visual effects heavy. Every single, it's basically a show where they are trying to, in, they basically put in a CG sort of bike in pretty much every shot. Right, and uh, it had just happened that the demo material we were provided with, we have a bunch of versions of the VFX shots, which allows us to show sort of input versioning. Now, I haven't changed any of this footage. This is as it was delivered to us a couple of years ago, and it's just demonstrating that we can make sequence versioning uh, working with your existing workflows, the existing ways that people typically rename and name visual effects shots. Let's say you have a typical show. You do a conform with an initial version of a VFX shot, and then the client comes in and says, isn't there a later one than that? I'm sure that was done. Can we update it? So what do you do now in Baselight? You have to go and either browse for it, and if they've named it really well, then it's really easy, but often they're not consistent. So you have to go around and find it. It's awkward. I mean, I've heard of, like, I won't say the production, but I've heard of producers and execs sitting in a room with a stopwatch, timing people on how long it took to update the VFX plates, and like saying, if it's any longer than 15 seconds, black mark on the grading session. The other way you might do it is you might conform. You might say, oh, well, we're going to conform again to find the latest version of the shots and then use a multi-paste. That works, but it does mean you've changed your entire timeline, which means you have to QC the entire timeline, which then slows you down. So you lose both ways. So what we're trying to do is come up with something which works better. So if we say, if we, if we, there's two types of file name versioning that we're introducing, of sequence versioning that we're introducing. There's file name versioning, which we'll start with, and then we have open clip versioning, which I'll come to later. So let's start. So I'm just going to open a, an empty timeline, and I'm going to save as it in the traditional fashion to make it something I can use for demos. So what we're going to do, we're going to conform an EDL, and I'm going to load some pre-configured settings, and we'll go through what they are. So essentially, what file name versioning is, often, if you have VFX shots, they're going to have something like a file name, da 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 da, -da underbar v something dot exr or whatever. And that's what Nuke uses to version up in Nuke Studio and stuff like this. So we now support the same thing. And what we do is when you go, when you use file name versioning, we basically find something which looks like a version number. And we have a few different regular expressions which detect it. And we replace it with a percent %V. And what that percent %V means is that we can then find every single file on our file system which matches that template. And now, because this system has indexing on, which means we have a complete history of everything that's on the machine, an index of every, all the media on the machine, that searching for new versions is very, very fast. Okay? So let's go back to our conform scene. All the settings are the same. There's nothing really new here. You conform in exactly the same way. All we have is a new setting here. Sequence versioning, either no or yes, which is detect versions, e.g. v3 in paths or file names. Okay, that's pretty much all you do. So what this script does is it basically moved, I've, I have multiple versions of the media, one with one version in it, one with two versions in it, one with three versions in it, to simulate someone copying some new VFX versions in. So now we look, we're basically looking into our directory and we're doing that. So I'm gonna do a conform now. So we're gonna decent conform. There's a couple of shots I need to fix up because basically there's metadata ambiguity. This is real customer data. I didn't want to change anything. So there are, there is some, there is something like a dust element which has the same sort of conform file name as the real shot. So we go done. And then we look and we say, oh, we have our perfect timeline. But we go, uh, what's all this rubbish? Why does it look like this? And the reason is that this, this, this footage, they chose to use the alpha channel to contain mats. So they basically have RGBA, and this is Baselight 5.3 build, which contains per pixel alpha. So now Baselight is taking that alpha, pre-multiplying it, and producing this. So that's easily fixed. I can go make a pake, which gives me the image back. Okay, But do I want to do that on every single shot? Not really. So what we can do is use another feature uh, in Baselight, uh, which was introduced, I think, in the 5.2 time frame, uh, and that is called media import rules. So we're just trying to showcase stuff that people may not know about to make their life easier, okay? So the media import rules are used 
to give you some ability to specify what happens to media when it arrives in the base light timeline. Now it can arrive via conform or by insertion by sequence from the sequence browser or anything. And there's often situations where you have certain things to do to that media which is non-standard when it comes in. In this situation, I've created a rule called fix up EXR. And it basically says anything which is of type EXR and the path contains CC underbar, cycle candidate underbar, I'm assuming that it's going to have, it might have the alpha of the main RGB default channel not be one, it might be something else. So I can go, I'm not going to do any metadata mapping, which metadata mapping allows you to say, you know, take the camera name and then convert it into the tape name and then add some more expressions. It allows you to generate new metadata columns automatically. Decode parameters, this is EXR, it's not raw, but you can set any decode parameters. And sequence overrides, I basically saying, I want alpha opacity to make opaque. So if I turn this on, I can now say apply to 49 shots and now we've fixed up our, all our EXRs. And if I conformed again, it would automatically happen because I already have the media or import rule on, if, if you see what I mean. So if we now look at what the, uh, what the user interface looks like as we scrub around our shots, those of you who know Baselight well will notice that the sequence section now is starting to look slightly different to perhaps to what you're used to. So the first one is now we have a version tag. It's basically in, I'll make this wider temporarily just to give you an idea where it is. Oh, it's actually too wide. So. Here, you can see here, uh, there is now a percent %V uh, in this shot, okay? So we basically have a, a percent %V. So what we're gonna do is, what do you do in situations when new stuff arrives? So I'm gonna run a script here, which is demo advanced, and you see what it does. All it does is move the V1 back to where it was and moves the V2s into the same place. So now, if I go to a, a shot I like, uh, maybe this one, for example, has only one version in it, I can now go, check for new sequence versions, okay? And just goes, one sequence operator needs a modification time update. So now, if I look in uh, this shot here, in, like for a shot here, this one here has, for example, two VFX versions here. We now have a VFX version here and something where they change the smoke a little bit. You get the idea. Okay, and that was done simply by, this checks the entire timeline, okay? And what I can also do is, let's say I do another one, and I do the same thing. I can now specify that I want to add a category and I want to create a shots view tab with all this sort of stuff. So it's doing a check. As we move forward in the show, VFX versions are slowing down. And there's now only two shots with new VFX versions. And basically, it's going to update the sequence operators. And now we've got our two shots, basically, which I can go to here. And you can see there's now three versions in this one, basically. So we can switch between those three versions. And you get the idea. And obviously, if you really, really want to completely automate it, so you don't, you leave it totally out of the user's hands as to when the versions get updated, we have an option here, check for new sequence version changes on scene open. So if I'd set that, then every time the user opens a scene, it'll have a quick scan. But those, those, the, that version checking basically, if you think of what actually happened when I went check for new sequence versions, on every single path, it did a scan looking for files which match that thing. So it's, it's all quite quick. And that's basically it. Right? You don't really have a, it's not something which should be very onerous. For people who use conventional naming, like you know, people who just make V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, uh, it should just work. You shouldn't have to change anything really. It should just do it for you. And it means that when new VFX versions arrive, it's very simple. So let's now talk about open clip versioning. So open clip is a little bit more complicated, but it's also more flexible, but it probably requires more work from you. So I'll explain what it is. So essentially, OpenClip is a file format. I'll just actually run a script to advance my thing. So what is an OpenClip? An OpenClip is an XML file. The file format was developed by Autodesk, and it's essentially an XML file which gives you a bunch of feeds, which are the basically paths to images, and a bunch of version numbers referencing those feeds. And what this is, you can think of an OpenClip file as being an indirection through which all versions are looked up. Okay, so. You, you have an open clip file that contains all the versions of a shot, and you can notice that I, in this particular example, I actually have the original camera footage, uh, as the, uh, the, the, a converted version of the original camera footage with no VFX in it, and something with a VFX-like path in there, which means 
OpenClip does not require you to have similar paths. It doesn't have to have the media on the same drive. Uh, the media can be of different types. So you could start with an R3D file and then switch to EXRs as VFX comes in. So, but it's a lot more flexible. The problem is you need to generate these things, right? So you could generate them from a flame. A flame will do that. If you're using a flame for conformers, some people do, then you could totally get a flame to generate the OpenClip files and we read them. The other option is for you to generate them yourself via in-house scripting. And a lot of facilities do do this because they already have in-house scripters to write similar things for other tools. For example, any one of a Technicolor size, Marvel, all this sort of stuff, already have script workflow scripting people who will read an asset database and generate pool lists and read an asset database and generate EDLs and this sort of stuff. And all we're saying is that they should also generate open clip files. So whenever you get new stuff put into, a, into an asset database, you would generate new open clip files and then Baselight would read them. So let's go back to our conform. And I'm going to delete all this and we're, just, we're going to do an open clip conform and see what the differences are. I'm going to load the same EDL, but I'm going to load a different bunch of conform settings and we'll see what the differences are. So the only real difference is if I switch on open clip, then suddenly uh, the sequence versioning option disappears because you're now using open clip to do versioning. And you specify uh, a search directory of where the open clip files are. And I'm only interested in any, the, re the restrict option basically says, don't show me any media which is not referenced by an open clip. So if you're a 100% open clip house, you want everything to come in via that, you manage all your assets that way, you could switch that on and it means Basically, it means the scanning is even faster because it doesn't even look for anything other than stuff that it knows should be referenced from an open clip. Other than that, the conform is the same. Because what happens is that we do a normal conform and then we use the open clips at the end to associate an open clip with a file. So we do a conform, same, same, same. And we can go to our shot. For example, this same shot, we can say we now have two versions. Uh, it looks very much the same as file name versioning, that's by intention. You can see the paths are quite different. I can now go to a shot which has absolutely no VFX done to it at all. This is the original converted plate, which the VFX guy started with. Okay. And they've done some re-racks and transforms and stuff, but fundamentally that's what it is. Now, what do we do? What, how does a facility add new versions? So essentially all they do is they write a new version of that open clip, right? So they run some script, they either get Flame to do it or they use an open script, uh, use their own scripting to do it. You can see here now the open clip's changed on disk. Something has updated it. So if I reload it, you can see now there are new, two new VFX shots. There's another VFX shot and the original stuff that was left there. And this is in much the same way as the editor detected that there was a change in that. Baselight can also detect the same thing. So if I go in here and do check for new sequence versions, yes, we have one which needs an update. It loads it, it's this shot you get the idea, okay? Um, and that's basically how it works. So we offer that, so that, that basically covers how sequence versioning works. You, you either use file name, which we think is probably more suitable for existing people who are, have good file naming and you know, commercials where they just name things the same thing each time. And open clip for your big facilities, asset databases where they all, every, all assets are checked in and you want baselight conform to be really quick. The sort of, high pressure Captain Marvels of this world where they really do want everything locked down and they don't want the user to have any real options as to which VFX version is set. It's dedicated, the, the production says what's the current version and we want you to sync with it. 